As Catholics and Christians, we talk a lot about the love of God. Did you listen to tonight's gospel? It's kind of hard sometimes when we look at Scripture to say, wait, was God really as loving and as merciful and as forgiving as we seek to portray Him as? Did you not see how He treated this Samaritan woman in today's gospel from Matthew? Well, you have to remember the context many times as well. That the Son of God came to save who? Well, to offer salvation to all, but he came to the lost sheep of Israel. Now, we have to many times look back at our Jewish history to understand our Christian identity many times. We have to remember that not all of those that God blessed as children of Abraham became Israelites. In fact, Abraham had many sons. He had two that we can name that we remember very specifically. One by his wife, one by his mistress. Many times we forget about the wife, or about the child born of the mistress, because when we look back at the descendants, we hear about them a lot in the Gospels. The Samaritans, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, those that many times were in conflict with the descendants of Isaac, who was the true-born, full-born son of Abraham and his wife Sarah. We forget that many times, and so when we see this conflict between Jesus and the Samaritans, we forget many times that Jesus was a Jew, and the enemies of the Jews were who? The Samaritans. And so the times that Jesus confronts many times the Samaritans, he's doing so ironically out of love to teach the Jewish people a lesson. Now, at first glance, when you hear today's gospel, you're like, okay, what lesson is he trying to teach people? Well, he's teaching them that he came for the lost sheep of Israel, for the Jews that have left the church, for the Israelites that weren't practicing, but he also came to recognize that you can be a Gentile, a non-Jew, and still have faith. When Jesus confronts the woman at the well, what is it that saves her? Her faith saves her. When he confronts this woman in today's gospel that comes to him asking for him to heal her daughter who is possessed by a demon, what does he say? I'm here for the lost sheep of Israel. You don't take the scraps, you don't take the food from the table and feed it to the dogs. I mean, that's about as negative as you can get as calling someone a dog. And yet, her response is one of faith. Well, even the dogs get the scraps from the table. He's going to, she's going to him and saying, no, I'm not a Jew. No, I am not a descendant of the house of Israel, but I still have faith that you are the Lord, you are the son of David, and miracles can happen through you. Woman, great is your faith. How many times do we, as members of that same lineage, because we as Christians, as Catholics, are descendants of Jews, have the same promise of the promise that was given to Abraham and all of his descendants, that our descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. He loves us all. All of his creation, God loves. Many times, though, out of our disobedience, we reject God's love, and we forget that sometimes when we're disobedient, there's repercussions for our actions. We see this all over the world. I I always found it interesting being the chaplain at McGinnis for the time that I was there that the teachers would get yelled at when I was there if the kids were failing. I got grounded when I got C's. Yet the teachers were the ones that were held responsible if the kids weren't doing well enough. And it's like, but your kids are just playing video games and surfing the internet. At what point does the kid have to become accountable? We live in such a world that it's easier to pass the blame than it is to take the responsibility, even as a parent sometimes, let alone as a grandparent, as a godparent, 
of how we are raising our children. But as a community of faith, we are called to strive for excellence, to see the model of faith that Christ offered to us and for us to love our enemies and to love our neighbor as ourselves, not because they deserve it, but because we don't, and God loves us anyways. We hear so often about God's unconditional love, and we hear about how we are called to reflect His unconditional love, yet the only love that we experience and that we offer in life is conditional. I'll love you if, I'll love you when, I'll love you because. To God, the response is, I love you. No ifs, ands, or buts. I love you. And by our baptisms, we are each baptized as priests, prophets, and kings, that we are endowed with certain responsibilities and with certain rights to preach the faith to stand up for what it is we believe, and to practice what it is we preach. It's the same faith that Cruz is about to be baptized into. That we, when we profess our faith at Mass through the Creed, we say with our lips what it is we believe in our hearts, or at least what we've learned in our minds many times. Sometimes it's back to that school education where We really don't learn it. We really don't believe it. We just memorize, regurgitate it, and recycle it. We see that a lot in our young people. We see that a lot in our not-so-young people. That we could spout off information, but what is it that we truly hold dear? Do we truly believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Or have we made other things in our lives equal to the one God? Where are our priorities in life? How do we model our faith for our children? How do we help them practice what it is that we preach? Because I don't know about you, but any time when I was growing up and I heard, do what I say, not what I do, I immediately stopped listening. But how many times is that how we act as parents? Godparents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, pastors? Do we become hypocritical many times in our speech? That's why one of the prayers that I always offer for daily Mass, and I talk about this all the time for a reason, is that we pray for the Pope, for the bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may truly seek to practice what they preach. Because I'm a failure. So is the Pope, so are the bishops, because I'm a sinner. But that doesn't mean I'm not trying. And that's the same type of faith that we are all told to grasp. The reality that, yes, I am a sinner, but that doesn't define me. St. Paul, in our second reading today, talked about the fact that God delivered us to disobedience so that he could have mercy on us. Think about that for a second. God loves us so much that he knew in the fullness of time that we would be disobedient and he created us anyways. Not only did he create us, but the word, his son, the second person of the Trinity, took on flesh to pay the price of sin for you and for me. That our disobedience owes us. How many times have we said, life's not fair. Why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. Why would this happen to me? Well, if we truly paid the price of our sins, we're getting off lucky right now with anything that's ever happened to us. But praise be to Jesus Christ that he loves us so much that, yeah, sometimes we have hard days. Sometimes we have lessons in life that we don't understand. We have things that it's like, okay, Lord, I don't understand these things. In fact, today, I texted my priest support group that I left this morning in Lawton, and I said, no good deed goes unpunished. They all slept in this morning, and I went to the discipleship conference. 
So I go to the discipleship conference. It's like, all right, I'm here. I'm listening to confessions. I got to see my mom, give her a hug. I got to see Deacon Paul, gave him a hug. And I got on the road. I'm excited. I'm going to get home. I'm going to eat lunch. I'm going to take a nap. Car flips over on I-40. I'm in park for 90 minutes. Not like moving. No, I'm in park in 107 degree heat. Lord, come on, man. So I immediately texted Kathy. I texted Jason. I said, hey, I want to let you know, crew is getting baptized. We may not have mass tonight, but crew is getting baptized at some point tonight. Praise God. It was only 90 minutes and not two and a half hours and got here in time. And all things worked out okay. Didn't get to eat lunch. Didn't get to take my nap. Didn't get to take my nap. The older you get, the more you realize naps are not just for kids. We long for them as adults. We hate them as kids. It's interesting. It's the same way many times with the faith. The things that as kids we fight are the same things that as adults we realize we really should have learned as kids. That's why it's so important for us as adults to impress on our kids, not just that naps are important, though that's there, there too, <laughs> but the faith is the only thing that will offer us hope in the world, no matter what obstacles there are in life, that God will never abandon them. That's the good news of the gospel, but it's also the good news that our kids don't hear. It's the good news that many times we don't hear. That's why anytime you go to confession, no matter what you've said in confession, these first two phrases immediately come out of my mouth. Thank you for making a good confession. Remember first and foremost that God loves you. Every confession. Because we need to hear it over and over and over and over until we begin to believe it. Because once we begin to believe it, to believe it, we may actually live as if it's true. And then not only will our lives change, but the lives of all of those in our circle, immediate and external, will have the opportunity to change. Oh, but Father, I don't have your preaching ability. Thank God for that. Because as you guys know, I've kissed, kissed the Barney Stone not once but twice and he gave me double the gift of gab. I'm sorry. <laughs> but whatever gifts God has given to you, utilize those for yourself, for your family, and for God. That however he has blessed you, remember that he loves you. And that he's calling each and every one of us to respond in kind out of that same love and blessing that he has given to us. The same blessing that he's about to give to crew in his own baptism. Where he doesn't taste the stain of sin and original sin, but instead dies to sin and rises as a new creation, as a beloved son of God. And so at this time, I invite the family Please join me back at the baptistry for cruise baptism.